So I'm really just documenting this process because again, I've never done this before. So I don't really know what's, what's gonna happen or like what I'm up for, but we'll see. Let me back up. My name is Matt Giovanisi. My first boil over was in 2006 and I've been home brewing ever since. I moved from New Jersey to the beer mecca of the US, Colorado in 2015. I scaled up my brewing significantly and eventually started the website brewcabin.com. My dream has been to build my own permanent indoor home brewery. Recently, I bought a house that allowed me to do just that. This is my house and this is my second garage. I think it was supposed to be a boat garage, but I don't own a boat, so I'm building a brewery. Truthfully, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm hiring help and trying to do it in just 40 days. The first step is designing it, so I called my dad. All right, so I guess what do you need from me then? Just measurements? Yeah, it, it, I kind of estimated off that floor plan I sent you. Right, so, and we just had pictures. Right, and I just worked that from the pictures. So now what you're going to do is you're going to measure it basically the way I'm going to tell you, which is just going from wall to wall and then from wall to the window what? and then the window width so i gotta know where the window is placed in each in the room the door mm. so all of that you, you know you measure it in sections and then you just i'll write it down and and then i'll modify the program so it matches what you found in the field okay is there anything else you need no that should do it all right thanks all right bye see you later bye after some quick measuring. I sent my dad the dimensions. Meanwhile, I bought a door, a sink, a condensate hood for ventilation, an RO system, lights, a new garage door opener thingy, a fan for ventilation, and a freezer for hop storage. Then I called around and started getting estimates for the work. I got the email back from my dad and here's what the design looks like. Okay, that's kind of boring. What about this? Wow. Let me just give you a tour. So this is the brewery space. Um, and got a window, got a table. This is the prep table right here. That's gonna be the sink, obviously. That's gonna be where everything brews. There'll be a hood up over there. Door will be there. And this wall will be painted. And we're gonna actually add a bar right there. And then over under the window will be the kegs, kegerator things like that, and then probably fermentation station over here, or I may put fermentation over here, not really sure yet. Or I may switch prep table over there, fermentation station, not really sure how my workflow is gonna be, but right now, um, I have some stuff I'm gonna do myself, other things I'm gonna hire out, only because I'm not really a handy person, I mean, I can do some stuff, so we'll see what happens. Um, all right. Next time I put the camera on, the door will be installed or in the middle of being installed. We just installed the door and here's what it looks like. What you can see there is the brand new door to the back of the brewery. The brewery also has a rooftop deck with, these stair with the staircase here. And that's the back door now. It has just been put in. There's the new door, because that's the door to the other garage. So the only way to get to this garage is you have to go through another garage to get to this garage. And if there's a car in the way, it's kind of awkward. And so this way, I mean, obviously you have the giant garage door here, that makes sense, but I'm not gonna open up a giant garage door because this space is gonna be conditioned. Um, it's gonna be heated, it's gonna be cooled, all that stuff. Well, that's enough of that. Now I had to figure out where I wanted all the outlets and lights installed. So I used masking tape to mark off where I wanted everything. Then the electricians came out and did all the work in just one day. Roll the montage. Okay. I want to go around and document all the lights, all the outlets, all the electricity that, electricity that was run into the brewery. Um, I hope this is all correct and I hope my plans accounted for future things. I guess worst case scenario I can just plug in, uh, you know, power strips or whatever if I need extra outlets. 
but let's walk through it. So I had the electrician add three sconces and then underneath is an outlet for, I don't know, charging phones or whatever. So this is the garage door opener and I had him move it because it used to be on the other side of the door, but now it's on this side. One switch controls all the lights up there. The other switch will control the sconces. Uh, electrician said had to put a light in on the outside here. So that's the back of the light. So yeah, that's the, that's the door. I have a regular 110 outlet going right there. And I have two 240 volt twist lock outlets going in right there. Then there's gonna be a switch here for the light outside. Then there's gonna be another switch for another outlet. That outlet is going to control the fan for the hood. On this wall, I had him put in four outlets. This outlet right here is gonna be for water. This outlet right here is gonna be for prep table stuff. This middle outlet right here will be for the kegerator and fridges. Uh, this last one would have been for like, so I need one for fermenters because the fermenters have the glycol chiller, uh, all the fermenters have their own temperature control. So I'm gonna need multiple outlets, but those are gonna be on a battery backup. All right, so what now? <sighs> Let me put the camera down because this is exhausting. So this is the brewery so far. There's still a lot that needs to be done, like a lot. I have a really good um, contractor who's been kind of doing he, he's the one that installed the door. He's gonna do the insulation. He's gonna do the floors. We're just gonna um, power wash and seal them. He's gonna do the painting. Uh, we have a separate person doing the drywall. We have a plumber coming in doing the RO line and the sink. Uh, the electrician came, that's all done. He just gotta come back after painting to put all the outlets in and face plates and stuff like that for the lights and outlets. And then after that, once the drywall's in, the concrete is sealed, it's gonna be the mini split above the door. I feel like it's all I do is spend time on this thing, but it's kinda one of the reasons we bought the place. So that's it. All right, see you in the next one, bye. Okay, uh, looks like the plumber just showed up. He wants to talk about a strategy for where I want the pipes for the sink. Um, so I want to record what's going on, but um, I don't want him to know. So I'm just going to put the phone in my pocket and I'll just record the conversation. So let's see. Here we go. Hey. Hey. So, uh, yeah, where do you think you want these pipes? Um, well, what I was hoping is to kind of run along the top of the ceiling here uh, in the wall and then maybe come down right along the uh, the corner here. You mean you want them in the wall? Yeah. Well, these are only two by fours. Okay. So if you put the pipes in the wall, they're guaranteed gonna freeze. So, what are my options then? Well, uh, I recommend that you put them on the inside of the wall because they're guaranteed gonna freeze. I'm gonna put PEX in so it has room to expand, but I <laughs> I would not recommend that. You'll see the pipes then? Yeah, you'll see the pipes. <sighs> All right, fine. I got a guy to install this sink that I bought. But hiding them pipes in the wall is a little harder than I thought. I told the plumber to put them in the wall, he said to me, he said you can't put the pipes in the wall, cause if I do, I could lose it all, and if it drops down to negative 20 degrees, all my mother pipes will freeze, so I can't put the pipes in the wall. That's okay, I guess. That's okay, I guess. That's okay. This is the back wall, what I'm calling wart production, and I'm gonna turn the camera around. The sink is gonna go right here in the corner. 
Now at first, I thought underneath the sink drain or the, tra or the drip tray, I could put in a reservoir, a blue reservoir for an RO system. Unfortunately, I cannot do that anymore because the drainosaur, which is the thing that we need to use for the drain, won't really fit underneath this because of the S valve or the S pipe. So we have to put it under here. These studs are two by fours. Not a lot of room for insulation. And the fact that this is an outside wall, this goes right outside, um, it means that it's not a good idea to put plumbing in behind the drywall. It could freeze. Even though we're using PEX, it could freeze. I guess long story short, uh, you're gonna see the pipes and I think I'm okay with that. I know I'm okay with it. I have to be okay with it. It'll be fine. Okay, so I wanna show you what they did. There's the pipe, he had to come through. There it is. And then there's, there's the PEX line for the hot and cold. And it runs kind of all along up here, which actually looks really cool. I kind of like the way it looks. Uh, next to the radon line, and it kind of just follows the radon pipe all the way down. And then into the basement where it's connected to the hot and cold line and add it to the drain. That was, he said that was the hard part, just getting it tapped in. So now that we're tapped in, all he's gonna do is he's gonna run a straight piece of uh, hot and cold PEX, straight. So what does that mean? That means um, he has to come back and do the rest later because uh, as of right now, all the pipe is connected. So we have water, we have sewage, and it's here, it's in the brewery. It's just not connected to the sink and the RO is not ran. What's gonna have to happen is this Saturday, which is tomorrow, somebody's coming in to put the insulation in just the ceiling. And then Monday, they're coming back to do the insulation on the walls. On Tuesday, they're gonna do the drywall. So I'm hoping that we can have this painted, like tape spackled, paint it before the, uh, the electrician comes. Okay, that said, let's open up this condensate hood. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what this thing looks like. So let's do it. The sink was installed, and what I'm about to show you in the brewery is kind of it's semi sort of finished because once they installed the sink, I decided to just start moving things into the brewery even though it's not done, just to kind of see where I wanted things laid out. So let's take a look at the sink. The way we're doing the sink is we have a drainosaur installed down here. So if we go down here, um, the it, water, you know, drains into this from underneath the sink. This fills up once it gets to a certain height, pump kicks on and pumps up through that white check valve all the way up the wall. And then it's on a slight downgrade. I think it's a one eighth inch downgrade all the way to the sewage line. You can see here, that's an RO line. So we just have this one pipe coming up, coming over and then going into the pot filler. So, next time you see me, the mini split will be in. After a few days, the HVAC company installed the mini split so the brewery can be heated and cooled. A few more days after that, the painter came back to paint the floors and install the black rubber trim. The same day he installed the trim, I reinstalled the sink, started moving in all my home brewing equipment, hooking up the RO system and pot filler, hanging shelves, and just a few more final touches. And after 40 days, my permanent indoor home brewery dream was finally realized. What should I brew?